안녕하십니까 연세타워 치과 손선보 원장입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Son s o n b o from Yonsei Tower Dental Office. I'm going to talk about various soft tissue preservation and augmentation techniques, contents, after placing implants. When we perform the secondary surgery, we need to preserve uh, soft tissue and what can we do about it. And soft tissue augmentation timing, indications. And lastly, we are going to look at soft tissue augmentation methods. After placing implants, during the secondary surgery, we encounter a problem like soft tissue handling. There are many techniques for that. Today, we are going to talk about representative techniques among them. When we place um, implants in a series of surgeries, in the secondary surgery, we encounter the problem such as this. When the flap is raised and healing abutments are placed in a standard way, and when the flap is repositioned, there's a superfluous soft tissue up here which can go over the healing abutments, and sometimes the opening in the interproximal area can expose the bone there, leading to the secondary healing. This was a huge volume graft case. The interproximal bone exposure can lead to the resorption of the bone there. Therefore, in the secondary surgery, the flap should be handled in a precise way to achieve the primary healing. In this situation, this is Dr. Patrick Palacy's idea. In this case, healing abutments were connected in a standard way, and the flaps are incised like this. And the flaps here are moved to the interproximal area before it is sutured. And this is what he proposed. And the method is currently utilized quite a lot. Primary healing is induced, so the exposure of interproximal bone and healing delay by the secondary healing would be prevented. So this is how they looked from the side during the secondary surgery. The common method used for the second surgery is punch method and crystal incision method and papilla regeneration technique to reproduce a natural form. Palazzi flap that I mentioned before, other methods have flat or concave part here, but however, the interdental papilla here has convexity, which is more natural. And this is an advantage. Let's look at it in more detail. The Palacci technique, the flap is incised. The pedicle flap is created so that it can be attached to the interdental bone tightly through suturing. In this case, a simple interrupted suture can be used, but if possible, cross matrix suture needs to be used. Suturing itself can press down on the interdental bone hard for better results. An actual case, implants are placed in a series and a flap is formed in a standard way. Healing abutments were connected. If you suture in a normal way, interproximal bone would be exposed and healing would occur but very slowly. Therefore, here the buccal flap incision design is made and pedicle flap is moved to the interproximal area and interrupted. If necessary, cross matrix suturing is done so that the flap is tightly attached to the interproximal bone. The second approach is a semi lunar excision. 
it can be used when keratinized tissue is sufficient, where palachi technique is not necessary. So in this case, buckle flap design is formed similar to the healing abutments and they are incised and this portion would be pulled down. The gingerbread was cut matching the healing abutment borders which would prevent the exposure of interproximal bone and the primary healing can be achieved here. Here the condition is sufficient keratinized tissue. Next, T-shaped incision. In the anterior region where aesthetic is important, the flap here is incised in the form of the letter T, one in the mesial and the other one in the distal side. The soft tissue of volume in these areas can be increased using the technique. After that, suture, suturing is done here, and interdental papilla in these areas would have more volume. Next, I-shaped incision, which is similar to the T-shaped incision just introduced. The horizontal incision is made 0.5 to 1 millimeter from the implant margin in the shape of the big letter I. It's also called a mini flap. Like this, the flap is made like this. The interdental papilla volume would not increase greatly, but it can prevent the decrease of soft tissue in these areas because of trauma. So this is a very good technique. It is a mini flap. Depending on situations, suturing may not be required. Next, it looks a little bit complicated. Split finger technique. Papilla is formed using this technique effectively on the palatal side. The inverse of the big letter U is the shape of the incision and the flap is cut into two. And the flap is raised a little bit here, and healing abutment is connected in a normal way, and the divided flap are positioned in the mesial distal size, and they are sutured. The volume in these areas would be increased quite a lot, so the split finger technique is something worth considering. Soft tissue grafting procedures are required from time to time. Timing for that is before implant placement, during implant placement, or during the second surgery, or after the delivery of implant prosthesis. Depending on the timing, there are advantages and disadvantages. You need to determine the timing considering the oral situation. Usually, during the second surgery, this procedure is conducted. Soft tissue graft indications. When soft tissue volume is uh, not sufficient, if there is a concavity, compared to the adjacent teeth. Soft tissue biotype is thin biotype. To change the biotype, this can be used. First, the connective tissue graft to change the form of soft tissue and to increase the alveolar crest. The most effective way is using connective tissue graft. It can be used surrounding the implant and to increase the volume of natural teeth, this is used quite often as well. 
Next, free gingival graft. Graft tissue is obtained from a donor site and it is sutured into the receiving site to increase the volume of keratinized gingiva. Thin gingival biotype can be changed to the thick biotype. Using this technique, implants were placed in a normal way and healing abutments were connected. If you look at the form of the soft tissue, mucogingival junction is positioned very upward and the vestibule is shallow. Looking at the situation, we can see that whenever buccal side is moving, the cervical ceiling would be broken. So here, a split thickness flap needs to be formed, and the bottom part should be sutured strongly if possible. From the donor side, from the palate, the graft is taken, and here, a strong suturing should be made to stabilize the graft, not to move the graft under normal routine activities. That is the key to this technique. Next, using the flap around implants, soft tissue volume can be increased using the modified palatal bro technique. On the palatal side, a split thickness flap is created. The connective tissue inside is dissected in full thickness. After that, on the buccal side, it is moved to the buccal side. So the flap is going into the buccal side and this area is sutured. It doesn't require a donor site, so it has a very good advantage. This is an actual case. In the aesthetic anterior region, it looks like the tooth was extracted due to periodontal problem. The buccal volume is decreased, and on the occlusal view, the concavity is not severe, but over time, the concavity here will get severe. That is what is expected, so at the time of the second surgery modified palatal row technique was planned. Inside here, palatally, a split thickness flap was formed. The connective tissue here is moved to the buccal side and the buccal flap is made. And the split thickness flap of connective tissue formed is pushed inward and after that, healing abutments would be connected in a normal way and sutured. And now it is sutured before and after, right after the operation. Prosthesis is delivered. If you look at here, compared to before, after the procedure, the volume is very much increased. CT graft that was introduced before would experience the shrinkage inevitably in a new environment during engraftment because it is non-particled flap. In the meanwhile, the VIP CT flap that you see here, it is the periosteal connective tissue flap obtained from the palatal soft tissue. It has blood vessels and it has very active blood supply and it is a very good technique not to cause graft shrinkage. Seeing the pedicled flap, so this is the best way to increase the volume of alveolar crest. The design of the flap is shown here. Sufficient incision line extension to the posterior region should be made. If the length is short, sufficient soft tissue graft cannot be achieved. Therefore, the incision line should be sufficiently extended posteriorly. Let's have a look at actual case. After extracting number 21, horizontal and vertical incisions were made. 
and the incision line is extended here sufficiently. A split thickness flap is made here and raised. Here, a full thickness flap is raised. Necessary implant placement or GBR would be performed. And after that, a split thickness flap is formed in this area. Connective tissue flap is created and toward the front, it is moved through dissection. After that, this area would be covered and the first suturing is performed. Releasing incision is made for primary healing and suturing follows. Please come to the offline master course where theories and hands-on are provided in parallel. The objective of making our dentists very strong in the practice. If you feel you need to learn more about implants and you need to scale up your skill, you are welcome to the course. Thank you.